so China upset the apple cart a little bit when they introduced this idea of super tags. And I think there's a lot of potential for confusion when you're working with tags and super tags and trying to figure out how to work with them. So in this video, I'm going to break down how to work with tags in LogSeq and how to work with super tags in Tana. And also how you can approach some of the super tag functionality in LogSeq itself. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll realize that this is a very different setup for the video. I've had a number of challenges in my setup and also just challenges in personal life and stuff. So yeah, this is just a low friction video. The audio might be a little bit patchy. I'm wearing my headphones. Yeah, things are a little bit different, but I just decided that I wanted to get this one out. It's been brewing for a long time. And if you want the perfectly structured videos and the yeah, well set up everything, have a look at the courses. I have got LogSeq Mastery and Unlock Tana, and you can also buy them as a bundle if you like using both as I do. The content that I'm going to be looking at in this video is the highlights from a book that I've just read called The Myth of Sisyphus, which is about absurdism and suicide. It comes from a positive place. You know, absurdism is a philosophy by Albert Camus is really embracing joy de vivre. I'd encourage you to read the book or maybe watch a video that I'll link to below, which just, yeah, comes with a positive side of this. Hopefully it doesn't come across too heavy in the video. It's just the most recent book that I've read. So this is how it looks in LogSeq. And just for comparison, this is how it doesn't look in Tana because it's offline. Okay, it's online again. And yeah, you'll see it's a very similar structure. Both of these applications are outliners. And yeah, it's different to what you might find in Obsidian, although you can use plugins. Blah, blah, blah. There's always, always these caveats. But really, the main difference in LogSeq and Tana is how they are structured. And this is where that whole idea of a super tag comes in. I think it makes sense to start this exploration looking at LogSeq itself and or looking in LogSeq itself. And what I'm going to look at here is the structure. So this is a page that's brought in by Readwise. It's the myth of Sisyphus and other essays. I've got my block properties here where this is also all imported by Readwise, which you know, gives me this defined input. And then in my page properties here, I can add this thing called tags. So this is a page property, which gives me a little bit more functionality in addition to your traditional tags but I'll show you how this all works now. So the book is about absurdism and suicide. So those are the two main concepts that it deals with. Now, this is just the structure that I like to do. I like to bring in like the passages and then you'll see here that it's got like formatting, which shows that it's, it's a quote. So this is a block quote formatting over here and then yeah, the quotes and also the location. Let's just scroll down and see what I find. Okay. But there's stuff about cook God. I could theoretically, if I want to, highlight Kierkegaard there so I'd be able to find him and putting it in backlinks is the exact same as putting in a tag but I'm, I'm sort of wanting to show the difference between super tags and tags so let me just follow on with that yeah this is about the spear that he's talking about here so I can then say this is about the spit. and I don't actually want to go and look into those tags because I don't think that'll be yeah happy topic maybe I can find something else that'll be a bit more positive to to look into nostalgia so but the essential the abstract philosopher and the religious philosopher start out from the same disorder and support each other in the same anxiety but the essential is to explain nostalgia here is stronger than knowledge okay so for the purposes of this video i'm just going to say this is related to nostalgia so what i'm doing with these tags is i'm just creating some sort of mapping that says this this is what triggers in my mind so i can find it at a later stage and when you do it with one book, it's pretty useless. But when you do it with many books or many sources, eventually you build this like library of blocks that you can return back to when you're writing or yeah, when you're doing anything creative. The other thing that I showed here right at the top is this tags block. And if I open up this absurdism page, I'm just going to shift click there and just close my link references. The nice thing that I get by adding this page property over here is I get these pages tagged with absurdism. So Myth of Sisyphus and other essays, and then Waiting for Godot. Now, Waiting for Godot, I did some little bit of a write-up over here. And here you'll see I've got another tag, which is like themes, shoulds. So this has got namespaces involved, but basically I'm just tagging concepts that I, like, I might want to return to. So if I'm writing about shoulds, like the shoulds in my life, I've got this, this block here where I said, I think I maybe read for the wrong reasons because it's one of the classics and that's what smart people do. They read the classics. Anyways, to wrap up the blog seek idea of tags, 
Tags are really a way to return back to concepts that you like have a unit of information of. So for instance, I'm actually going to open up these linked references. They're fairly safe. Chatting here, get comfortable with the fact that there is no answer. This is the key message of absurdism. Everything else is so arbitrary without love. And then also just chatting about absurdism as a philosophy. So if I'm going to write about absurdism, I could then, I have all these like packets of information already available in my workspace or database that I can then return back to data. I've published some videos on like my writing process. You can go have a look at that and how I like move things around. I really enjoy having all these blocks and the flexibility of LogSeq. The fact that it's just a tag, I can move it around. Yeah, there's nothing inherently like super powerful about it. It's just like a point to return back to. Now you'll see when I go into Tana that things are a little bit different. Just a quick one over here. In my readwise settings for my export to Tana, you'll see that I've got the send to inbox turned on. So that means that all my readwise imports will go to my inbox rather than to my day nodes. It's just a nice way to structure it. For me, I like to think of things in stacks, like is it in readwise? Is it in my inbox? Is it in my day node? And when I've processed it, it goes into my day node. That's how I work with other things. As I say, I don't really work with my imports in Tana or my book imports, but it's just a helpful clarification, this example. So if I go to Tana, I'm in my inbox and I go to Mythosophus, you'll notice that I've got these tags over here. So these are my super tags. Now, I like to think of super tags as saying, this belongs in this database. It's not 100% accurate. Really, if you're familiar with computer models, then this is a class and you can extend classes, but it's just a helpful way to think this is where this belongs, or this is, this is this type of thing maybe is the better way to think about it. So myth of Sisyphus is a book and it's a readwise input. Okay. So you'll see here that I've got some fields which come in from my import as well. And yeah, this is just all automatically generated. Now, I'm not going to go into how you can set this up and map it in your system because Cortex Futura has a great video where he looks at this in detail and shows you how you can ensure that consistency across your Readwise and Tana system. So go have a look at that. I'll redirect to that. I'm just trying to illustrate the structure over here. So the one thing I will do is I'll just bring in my own super tag here, which is hashtag books. And for me, my books is more of like a reading list rather than like a managing all the information that I've read. And this is where the Cortex Futura video is helpful because you can merge books and books and all of this will then come into all your future imports. Uh, so what I'll do here is I'll just say this is Albert Camus and yeah, this is actually not important. What I'm wanting to show is that by bringing in a super tag, you're getting a predefined template that you can structure your information. So this is really where Tana is excellent. It is in structuring information consistently. And this becomes very useful if you're working in a team environment and yeah, you don't want to lose things anyways. So the thing that you'll see here is that each highlight, each node has this highlight super tag. So essentially what that's saying is that like in any block of information that I'm importing and saying, this is a highlight. And then that will enable me to access the structure of a highlight. And then you'll see the readwise location is there in the metadata and Here's the difference. Like if I, this is, where's the quote on suicide? Okay, yeah, here we go. All healthy men having thoughts of their own suicide, whatever. Sorry, it's just so morbid, but it's the last book that I read. And it was, uh, yeah, it's more about absurdism. There's a great video which I'll link to, which is about the positivity of absurdism. So yeah, let's not get down about that. But yeah, if I want to not say this relates to suicide, I can't just say hashtag suicide. Okay, because it, what that will do is it'll create a super tag. And this doesn't make sense. Like, I don't need a, like, I don't have a suicide database necessarily. Let's let me just say absurdism, just so that someone watching this video doesn't like think of oh, what's going on. So I can't create that. Well, I can, but it doesn't make sense to do it. What I'm wanting to do here, and like an approach that I've used in my templates and the other way that I set things up, is I will say, cool, control shift click on that. And then I'll create a field which is concepts or tag concepts. There we go. And then in that tag concepts field, I will then say the tag concepts and I can add it. I can say absurdism, absurdism. And I can just with all the power that I have in Tana available to me, I can say tag as concepts. 
So now I've got a database of concepts and then I can, you know, map those concepts in each highlight. So if I go to this absurdism node, I'm just going to say control click over here. That is right. You'll then see I have my references appears as tag concepts in this highlight. And you can configure it to show that this comes from Myth of Sisyphus and other essays. Okay, it's there in the breadcrumbs, but like there's other ways of doing it. There's a lot of power in it. But it, it's a little bit more difficult to actually get that structure or to get it to appear as you want. So that low touch or high flexibility of LogSeq is really helpful and for me in the writing process. For other things like, you know, taking project notes or structuring your project, like the breakdown of like, as, as I've shown in other videos, like the project chunks, ideas, whatever, all of that, very helpful to structure with super tags. But I think that's a simple illustration of the difference, hopefully. Now I spoke in the beginning of the video about how you can approximate some of the super tag functionality in LogSeq. And that's really all by using your properties over here. So these are my page properties. Now the property that you would like to use or might want to use here is a type. May I just say this thing, Myth of Sisyphus, is type book. But you'll see here that I've used the input property over here. So in my personal database, I've got input property, an output property, an event property, and all of those might be thought of as downstream or like inherited from the type property. So that's like one way of doing it. Now, LogSeq are in the process of building a database only version, which will have super tag like functionality. I've seen some of the demos around that. I think it could get a little bit confusing at that point with what's tags, what's super tags, but for the time being, I'm very happy with just this loose, flexible structure. And as I say, this comes from my Readwise import. I had configured it to be like that. You can also use uh, text expanders. So I use JJIB and that gives me in my book templates. That's using a text. I've made another video on that. You could also use a template, so forward slash templates. And then I don't even have a book thing anymore because I don't think, well, that's an article. Great. So that's my article um, metadata that I've structured in as a template. And if, actually, if I just undo that and I go to my articles, so shift click articles over there. You'll see here that I've got all of my articles are then referenceable over here. And yeah, there's a beginner's guide to databases if you want to go look at how databases work. Okay, but what I'm just showing there is that it's in, I've, I've built ways to consistently input information into LogSeq so that I get that benefit of structured information, but without having to go overboard and defining super tags and defining all the inheritance and all that sort of thing. It's really simple and works well for my needs in knowledge management. So there we have it. It's a lot looser, but the idea is just to still produce helpful content rather than being silent on the side of the world. So let me know in the comments if that was helpful for you. If you are interested in going into more detail, as I said, there's a separate LogSeq Mastery course and an Unlock Tana course and a bundle if you want both of them together. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.